Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today let's hack Microsoft's crappy recall feature. Now ladies and gentlemen, about two weeks ago I covered a feature where Microsoft was about to release, uh, uh, you know, amongst their new lineup of uh, Microsoft plus Copilot plus PCs, whatever the heck they are, and uh, decided to implement a feature known as Recall, which periodically takes screenshots of your computer that basically are stored on your device, and you can look through them to see fragments of your past, right? Now, since then, there's been a whole lot of privacy nightmare stuff that's basically been brought out. So today, I decided to install the feature myself, actually show you what it looks like, and then show you how unsecure and how hackable it is so anybody can grab this data and look through the actual screenshots and see compromising pictures of your naked body, for instance, right? Your significant other, your address entered in fields, possibly your passwords. It's a whole new world out here, and it's time to get down to the bottom of it. So to give you an idea, Windows comes on two different versions, okay? You've got Windows for x86-64. We all know this is what's running on our desktops uh, for the most part, right? And then you've got Windows on ARM. Now, ARM is a different type of processor a different processor architecture that is primarily found in mobile devices and laptops these days, right? So your mobile devices run on ARM systems, uh, they're efficient, that's why they last for a day plus uh, and sometimes can handle pretty significant workloads. Now, laptops are kind of new to this. Apple released ARM-based laptops years ago, titling them Apple Silicon. So this laptop I have right here, which is what we're gonna be using in this video, uh, actually has uh, 64 gigs of memory, and it's an Apple M1 Max. So this isn't anything massively new, but I'm only using this because this is the same architecture as Microsoft Windows with the recall feature, ARM64. So in this situation, I basically went on the internet, I downloaded a 64-bit version of the ARM version of Windows that had the recall feature. Then we downloaded the AI training workloads, implemented them using a program known as Amphirage, okay, which allowed us to download uh, these tools, implement them in, restart our system, and bam, we have Windows Recall. Now there's two ways to do this. You can either have a laptop with an ARM-based processor like I do here, or you can provision a free virtual machine from my understanding in the Azure VM system that Microsoft runs. I obviously went with my own hardware. So here we've got an actual Windows system, and if you look in the bottom right, obviously I haven't activated Windows, but you can see that Windows is saving snapshots, okay? So in this situation, if we actually open this up here real quick, you can open Recall and find out, okay, it's got a little progress bar. So in this situation, it's basically taken screenshots of a lot of the happenings that I've been doing. So for instance, when I was browsing certain GitHubs for a project known as Total Recall, and of course, the further I went back, you can see me installing Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag through the Ubisoft launcher. And then lo and behold, I'm also browsing 4chan and potentially the Shardy, for instance. And then lo and behold, what's really wild is this image right here. <laughs> So for instance, right here, you can see that it's captured my Google account right here, uh, whatever I would use. And then of course, it also captured my password. Now I also clicked show password, which is something periodically people will do, especially just to quickly see if their passwords match the complexity that they've done, okay? Um, but this is scary in the sense that imagine if this was like eBay or Shopify or you know a place where I was buying anything and I put in my entire address. Well, it captured a screenshot of it and it's basically there to grab. Now to understand, Microsoft said that this was basically gonna be running on Copilot plus PCs. And what that means is the processors that they would have, these Snapdragon X Elites, would also have something known as an NPU. So clearly this feature can run on processors that don't have that neural processing unit. To my knowledge, the Mac M1 processor does not have that. And even in that situation, <laughs> it is running entirely under a virtual machine as well, too. So the uh, you know the 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 the, um, the hardware that I'm giving to it is already limited in nature, anyways. But anyways, that being said, though, ladies and gentlemen, let's actually start looking into what else this stuff does. So by going into the recall feature right over here, you can actually uh, go and check its settings real quickly. And you'll find, no, I'm not activating Windows, get out of here. You can see that it gives you the option to do the saving of snapshots and whatnot, so it is something that you can opt in or opt out. Now, obviously, with Microsoft Windows, who knows? 
how long the opt-in period is. Maybe one day this could become fucking mandatory. And I don't trust Microsoft. And so when they say that all the data is done locally, to me, that doesn't mean that the training that your computer does for the artificial intelligence doesn't get sent back to Microsoft in an unidentifiable manner, okay? This, in my opinion, if Microsoft is to not be trusted, okay, if we're gonna put the tinfoil hat on, I could actually imagine, you know, unidentifiable, uh, you know, data being sent over back to Microsoft to help with their massive AI farm, okay? Because that's all the world is. It's about, it's leading us into artificial intelligence. And in a weird sort of way, the privacy that we, I guess, are losing day by day is going to be lost at an accelerated rate. So again, with one day of actual recall, you can see that the actual amount that was stored on my system was 8.79 megabytes. So it's actually quite efficient <laughs> when it comes to storing information. And of course, one thing that it does also allow you to do is filter out applications and of course, certain websites. So if you are going to, I don't know, like a, an adult website, you can basically add that into this entire pool and then it will get rid of that website, okay? If you are going to 4chan, for instance, you can get rid of that. Or if you're going to the Shardy, you can you know, enter the URL. If you're going to any website that's compromising, uh, like, I don't know, a bank website, the internal revenue service, then you can add those things in. But honestly, if you're that paranoid, you might as well go up here and just turn the fucking feature off, okay? <laughs> So again, going back to recall, the cool things about features like this is obviously you can effectively, and it even started capturing literally today. So one of the things is if you can go onto any of these screenshots, you can literally zoom in and actually, you know, copy entire pieces out. Uh, you know, you can actually click on this little image or this button right here and go exactly to the website that you were looking at in your recall. So parts of it are actually kind of cool, right? Like I could see myself maybe occasionally using this, I guess, but it's not something that I think is worth the inherent security risk that we're about to see. So you guys can see that even without the NPU, it's actually able to capture all these uh, screenshots and accurately process them to the point where you can A, you know, parse through all of the actual uh, screenshots here and do whatever it is that you need to that Microsoft offers. So a lot of the stuff provided here works without that neural processing unit. So whatever they said that, you know, you need the AI specifically for recall, it, in my opinion, it kind of is bullshit. So since we talked about this, a user has come out and basically created a tool known as Total Recall. So Total Recall is a tool that extracts data from the recall feature in Windows 11, providing an easy way to access information about your PC activities, snapshots. So here they talk about this being a privacy nightmare. And of course, even Satya Nadella talking about the recall feature. But again, they also gave a tool that allows you to extract all of these information. So how they describe it. So according to this GitHub right here, what they say is Windows recall stores everything locally in an unencrypted SQLite database. And the screenshots are simply saved in a folder on your PC. Here's where you can find them. And they provide you the exact folder where your screenshots are saved inside the image store folder. So to give a quick little idea here, Microsoft said that this stuff is stored encrypted and they're not wrong. Most devices these days are sold with encryption enabled. The problem with encryption being enabled is that it's helpful if somebody steals your device, right? And they run away with your computer because then they're trying to access a computer from you know, a cold boot that typically will have its information encrypted. But if you enter your passwords and you're generally using it, Windows and most operating systems will then unencrypt portions of your device. And then somebody could just smash your head in and start grabbing information, or they can infect you with malware that can extract this kind of information. They can run tools like this and extract data. So let's actually run this tool and show you how this extracts those screenshots. So here I've got Total Recall right here. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a command terminal here, preferably with administrator privileges, just so we can get rid of any form of uh, permission requirements. And also, uh, this requires Python. This is a Python script. So there is another uh, added boon to it. So the way that we get this going is we do command prompt, run as administrator, hit yes. And of course, in this situation, we're just going to navigate through the command line over to that specific folder where total recall is. So just give me a second. CD, CD desktop, CD total recall. 
And right here, you can see that I've got the Python script. So if I do total recall.py, it starts off the script. And over here, you can see that all we need to do is hit yes, Windows recall feature found. Do you want to proceed with the extraction? So we type in yes and boom. Uh, it's actually just extracted that quickly, ladies and gentlemen. And now we've got a new folder right here, ready to go. So if you open that up, you can see that we've got a couple things over here. Total Recall gives us, you know, a quick header of all the actual screenshots that it's basically ripped out from us. And then, of course, if you look at the UKG, this is the base data file and SQL database that you can actually parse through. And there's some information here that can be worth looking through. But important enough is the image store. So you open up the image store here and you can see all the screenshots are easily accessible. So if you look at some of the sizes for these screenshots, they're not massive. So for instance, you're looking at 91.7 kilobytes and 84.2 kilobytes, 75.8, 88. The biggest we found is 103 kilobytes. So a lot of these you know, screenshots are relatively small. And the scary thing about it is, is let's say a hacker infects you with malware and grabs these screenshots over a typical standard broadband connection, exfiltrating this data isn't necessarily difficult at all. So all these screenshots that your computer's basically been taking, and in some cases of sensitive information, can be grabbed. And I have no doubt that they can apply the screen ray feature and then parse the information within this very easily. So just imagine, you know, you're on a website and you put your credit card information in or you put your address in. If that information is grabbed, it serves as another tool that hackers can use in Windows 11 to grab more information from somebody. Look, what you're seeing here isn't something that couldn't have already been done with key loggers, other forms of hacking tools. But the reality of it is all this does is create an extra layer, an extra add an extra boon for hackers when they're grabbing users' data, right? That's really what it comes down to. And that is the scariest aspect of this entire operating system, of this entire feature, right? You know, it's not as if passwords are somehow more insecure than they were before. It's just that now, if somebody wants to get a live snapshot view of what you were doing on your computer for however long, they have that right there. And with eight megabytes for roughly half a day of use, the 25 gigabytes can store possibly weeks and months of what you were doing on your device. Now, on, in the best sense, I think Microsoft made this feature because genuinely speaking, the Windows search itself is already, in my opinion, very dog shit. And in fact, comparing this feature when I think it was first really introduced in Windows Vista has always been an embarrassment for Microsoft compared to Mac OS's Spotlight, or really any other operating system to be real with you. So maybe recall serves as that sort of over-engineered fix to the Windows search feature. Because yes, you can't search in recall for things that you were doing. Um, the other thing is, is honestly, like I said in the beginning of this video, it really could be a feature where Microsoft is training an AI locally and they could potentially at some point send unidentifiable information. So information that wouldn't identify you, but you know, stuff that would help their own AI farm in the cloud. You know, people who basically seeing metrics of what certain people from a certain region are doing on their computers, what websites you go to, a whole level of personal privacy just completely washed away in one computer generation. It's insane. So where it says in the BBC article that a would-be hacker would need to gain physical access to a device, unlock it, and sign in before they could access those screenshots, according to that tool, you wouldn't need to get access to anything. Data could be accessed entirely remotely based on tools like this. Somebody could infect you with malware and grab your recall shit all without ever having physical access to your device just by socially engineering people or, you know, sending out a piece of malware on the internet. Or, you know, it's not something that would require somebody to be at a physical device. That is absurd. And this is what a journalist that basically said Microsoft told them, that attackers would need to get physical access to your laptop. Microsoft is right, but this stuff can be accessed remotely. So you can even see like in this clip, Microsoft uh, engineers, from my understanding, are accessing that same folder and literally looking at those same screenshots that we pulled out. And you might be like, but Muda, what if you need to just run as an administrator? According to Microsoft's own page, 
most people already run as full administrators on their device. So that privilege escalation isn't really much of an issue even for hackers in that situation too. And even if you see things like a UAC prompt, remember Microsoft's own words say a UAC isn't a security boundary. It can be hijacked by unprivileged software that runs on the same desktop. So again, same desktop elevation is considered a convenience feature. And as we've seen, the actual recall feature doesn't automatically blur out passwords and sensitive information. You would think with such an AI powered company these days, they could fucking figure out if people are entering shipping information and passwords or credit card numbers, insane stuff. Now, personally, I really do think that this feature possibly has some boons, but for the average Microsoft user, like grandparents, parents, or people that aren't exactly tech literate in most cases, this can be a nightmare waiting to happen. Look, when I was getting my passport done, there was at least three old people who were willing to fall for scams and deceptive shit on the internet, okay? Losing actual money. Now imagine them losing more information on top of whatever they're losing, okay? And sure, maybe that might be a fringe case, but for the average person that may be infected with malware that could be technologically you know, efficient, this is still a problem that Microsoft is failing to address. With the devices that actually natively run this stuff, I think a week or two out, Microsoft needs to recall like recall out there, okay? Like literally they need to get rid of this shit and take it back to the fucking drawing board. But here's the thing. I don't think Microsoft really thinks that they're in a position where they feel like they're actually threatened. For most people, they will probably still use Windows. And if this feature even becomes mandatory, Microsoft probably banks on most people being too lazy or too locked into their ecosystem to consider leaving. Now, I have always said, consider switching to Linux, okay? This fucking point, Mac OS might be a more secure and privacy focused choice than whatever Microsoft is offering these days. So I would say switch to Linux. And here's the thing, obviously Linux isn't perfect. Like if you're somebody that needs the Adobe suite of software, then maybe Linux isn't for you, okay? Maybe you might need to consider relearning other softwares in order to completely cut the cord. Hey, maybe you play a few games that need Windows and it's anti-cheat to function. Maybe that is the case. Uh, there's a million reasons why people are unfortunately still stuck on Windows. But I think for the average person that just browses the web or maybe plays the occasional game here or there, it is time to start cutting the Windows cord and maybe considering switching to Linux. Because here's the thing, okay? When you install Linux systems, uh, at least the system I have, Arch, you effectively install a version of Linux that is basically built by you. And it doesn't contain all the bullshit that companies like to throw onto you. Look, a feature like recall could easily be implemented in Linux when NPUs become more of a thing. Uh, it could even be implemented in Macs. Hell, it runs just fine on systems it's not even fucking optimized for. But the thing is, at least in that situation, at least with Linux, you know you control your hardware, your, your software. With Microsoft Windows, you really can't trust them. And I think the PR disaster they're having is because of the lack of trust. Actually, in a turn of events, uh, while editing this video, Microsoft actually came out, pretty much addressed this from a PR perspective, and basically said that Copilot Plus systems that run this Microsoft recall, they're going to give a clearer choice to opt in. So you get this special screen that says, do you want Windows to save snapshots? No or yes. And then you also need something like Windows Hello, which is their biometrics tool in order to enable recall. And of course, to keep talking about its security and whatnot. And look, at the end of the day, it all comes back to exactly where my, uh, I guess you could say fear is when it comes to Microsoft. I have such a severe lack of trust of this company that I think it's pretty much going to be opt out until it's not. I don't know the extent of where they're gonna take this and when it gets enabled on pretty much every device and sticks to Windows as a whole. But ultimately, it's up to you if you want to trust Microsoft, given the fact that their operating systems just keep containing more and more shady things like this as the years go on. But yeah, that being said, I wanted to add this update because it was important enough. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and now I'm out.